نحمده ونصلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا هلان محمد وعلى آل صل على سيدنا هلان محمد بارك سمسل عليه صلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم last time you know we're going to continue السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته last time we were talking about موسى عليه السلام We'll continue from there today, inshallah. Uh, and as we mentioned before, you know, we were last time, you know, as he was leaving Madian uh, with his family, uh, and on the way he sees the fire and he goes there to uh, to get some fire to help with the family. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls him out, or calls to him and talks to him, and basically assigns him the mission of going and preaching to Fir'aun and freeing the children of Israel from Egypt. Uh, as we said before, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him this command, uh, he asks, Musa alayhi salam asks for a few things. Uh, you know, starting off with Rabbish Rahli Sadri, you know, to, oh Allah, open my chest or, or uh, expand my chest for me and, for, and give me strength and uh, loosen my tongue and also he asked for his brother, older brother Harun al-Islam to be his uh, uh, helper uh, in this task. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants him all of this and he commands them to go to Fir'aun uh, and to speak to him gently. Qawlul layyina, you know, to speak to him in, in, a, in a gentle manner. You know, even though he's transgressed all of these bounds. And so you know, they immediately leave, headed for their task. So he doesn't even go back to the family, you know, because this is reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, like when Ibrahim alayhi salam, he left Ismail alayhi salam and his mother, be, or be, the mother of Ismail alayhi salam, Bibi Hajr, uh, salamu alayhi in Mecca, with nothing. You know, only on the trust of Allah. And so Musa alayhi salam leaves his family, uh, in the care of Allah, and he heads to go and fulfill his his mission, you know, which is to go and preach to Fir'aun and to free the children of Israel from captivity or the bondage in in Egypt. And before they leave, though, Musa al-Islami also he says to Allah subhanahu wa taala that you know they have a charge against me, and I fear that they may imprison us or kill us. And Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "You go, and I am seeing." You know, don't worry, no fear, and just go. And so he goes. And when they arrive in the court of Fir'aun, you know, of course Fir'aun, you know, is telling everybody that he is God. You know, you know, saying, "Ana Rabbukum al You know, I am the Lord Most High. Not just any Lord, but the highest Lord. Uh, and. And so you can imagine his court, you know, and you have all of these people that are his yes men, you know, bowing and, and you know, everything he says, you know, they're acknowledging and, and you know, kind of, uh, you know, nudging it even on further, you know, keeping his ego boosted. And two of these main advisors were Haman and Qarun. And so when Musa al-Islam and his brother Harun al-Islam, when they enter the court, you know, they immediately, they start preaching to him that we have been sent by, our, by the Lord Most High, you know, to ask you to free the children of Israel. They also tell him, you know, about, uh, give him glad tidings of those who accept faith 
and also warn him against the, uh, against the uh, against neglecting faith you know, and what the consequences of that would be and so in this conversation you know Fir'aun he asked Musa he says who is your Lord you know, I want to know about your Lord and so Musa Islam he says Rabbus Samawati wal Ardi wa ma baynahuma he is the Lord of the heavens and the earth and whatever is in between. Uh, and later on he also says to him, he says, Rabbul Mashriki wal Maghribi wa ma baynahuma, that he is the Lord of the east and the west and everything that is in between. Uh, and he gives him, you know, he tells him about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the characteristics of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preaching to him. And Firaun now he says, you know, he he starts Telling Musa al Islam about you know that you know we did you such a favor you grew up in, you know in in this castle and, and or in this palace and with amongst us and you know we did all of these favors and now you come to us like this you know and you were you were ungrateful and he reminds him that you killed the man you know and you ran away you know you committed this crime which is an important point to understand here uh, you know he reminds him of what he did before. You know, that now you're telling us this, but you did this before. You know, and Musa al-Islam, he says, you know, I did that, you know, when I was dhalin. And of course, a lot of people try to translate that as uh, when I was misguided. But again, the prophets are never misguided. You know, just like when the sons of Yaqub al-Islam uh, are talking about him. You know, or when the friends of Zulaikha are talking about her, you know, Dalalim Mubin. You know, they each say Dalalim Mubin. And which, again, in that situation or in that context doesn't mean misguidance. You know, in that context with Yaqub al Islam and with Zulaikha, meaning that he's just, you know, Yaqub al Islam was lost in the love of Yusuf. And Zulaikha was also lost in the love of Yusuf. And, and so being lost in that love. You know, so when we say this for Rasulullah he is lost in the love of Allah. And we'll come back to this point inshallah. So Musa he says this, he says that you know that uh, that I was of course people translate also as error but you know he was lost in the love of his people and in trying to defend his people you know, that man became a victim. And so, Firaun brings this up. And the reason this is important to understand here is, you know, when we look at the life of Rasulullah there is never an incident where Quraysh or any of the people could say to him that, well, you did this before and now you're telling us this. You know? Because, Again, people translate that you were misguided and we guided you. And then there are those who try to sugarcoat this a little bit and they say, well, you were, you were unaware of the Sharia and now you are aware. Yeah. But again, there is never an incident where Quraysh ever said that, well, you know, you did this and now you're saying this. You know, because if you look at the life of Rasulullah so even before the declaration of prophethood, there is no difference in what he said and did before and what he said and did after, other than he's expounding upon the truth. You know, so that the people, before he was not preaching to them, because he was not ordered to preach to them, and now he's ordered to preach to them and expound upon the truth, and now he's doing that. You know, if you look at, you know, before, he never bowed down to the idols. Otherwise, Quraysh would have said, oh, see, you know, you did this before, and now you're telling us not to do this. To the extent that no, not even those associated with him, or even in his household, anyone bowed down to the idols. I mean, you look at Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu. You know, he never worshipped the idols, he never drank liquor, which were common vices among, among the society. But because of his association with the Rasulullah, he never did this. Sayyidina Ali, karamallahu 
he never drank even before Islam or bowed down to any of the idols. You know, Zaid bin Haritha narrates, he says that, you know, before Islam, you know, they would go and make tawaf. And of course the practice of Quraysh when they made tawaf was that as they would pass by the idols, they would touch the idols. Yeah. To gain some benefit, you know, uh, to touch something that, that they considered sacred. They would touch the idols as they would go by them. And he says Rasulullah had forbidden the household that when you make tawaf, you do not touch the idols. So he says one time, you know, he's a young boy, so he says, I just wanted to see what would happen. You know, why did he tell us not to do this? He says, I just wanted to see. And so as he was passing by one of the idols, and Rasulullah was with him, he touched one of the idols, and Rasulullah gently reminded him. He said, did I not tell you not to touch the idols? And he says, so, you know. Rasulullah never ate any meat that was sacrificed to the idols or to, the, to their guides, gods of Quraysh. You know, and again, there was an incident where uh, meat that had been slaughtered in the name of some idol was presented before him and he refused to eat it. These are well-documented uh, incidences. Quraysh, you know, during the time of Hajj, would not leave Mecca. They would not go to Arafat. They said that Arafat is outside of the Haram and we are the dwellers of Haram, so we have superiority. So we don't know to, we don't need to go to Arafat for Hajj. And yet there are multiple incidences before this is before Islam, because after Islam, you know, after the declaration of prophethood, the Rasulullah only made one Hajj. But before that, you know, there are incidents where the people mentioned seeing Rasulullah in Arafat at the time of Hajj. So Quraysh had nothing that they could say, oh, you know, why are you saying this now when you said this before? You know, Firaun thought he had something on Musa, salam, but Quraysh had, didn't even think they had anything. There was nothing. So, as this conversation is going on, you know, and when, when, Pharaoh, when he brings up this issue of, oh, you know, you, you killed the man, so I'm going to have you arrested and, and, and imprisoned. So Musa al-Islam, he asked him, he says, what if I show you clear proof, show you signs? Now, one important point to understand here is that prophets themselves are the greater sign. You know, they bring all of these signs with them, but they are greater. They are a greater sign than what they bring. And Pharaoh knew this, which would be un important to understand later. So he says, "If I give, show you clear proof, you know that I am the messenger of Allah." So he says, "Okay, what do you have?" So Musa al Islam proceeds to throw down his staff, and it becomes the serpent, and he places his hand in, in his side and he takes it out and it's shining light. Uh, of course, when the court, or the whole court sees this, you know, they have no response to this other than the typical, oh, you know, he's a magician. This is magic. And, and Firaun proceeds to say that, you know, this, he, he, that, to say to Musa al-Islam that he is a lowly madman. Astaghfirullah. And then they start consulting with each other. What do we do? You know, Firaun, he's saying to his people, oh, you know, he's trying to drive us out of our land with this magic. There are multiple points that I'm going to come back to. But he says this, and so now they start conversing and saying, okay, what do we do? And so the advisors, they said, well, let's keep them busy and then send for the great magicians of, of the country so that they can compete with him. Now here, it's important to note that, you know, Fir'aun had ruled over Egypt for a long time, claiming to be God. 
And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not even bother him with a headache. You know, for Allah it doesn't matter. You know, if all of us claim to be gods, uh, what difference does it make to Allah? It makes absolutely no difference. And we can claim all we want, doesn't make it true. You know, because He is the only God. And so Fir'aun had abused the people, had done all of these things. He had, he had, he had forced the people to worship him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not do a single thing to him. Again, not even a headache. But now when he insults you know, Musa al-Islam in his court, who has come and spoken to him in a very eloquent and gentle manner, you know, he insults him, now everything changes. Because the insulting of Firaun, if anybody else in the court had insulted Musa al -Islam, it would not have been a big deal. But when Firaun insulted Musa al -Islam, Firaun did it knowing who he is. You know, Musa al -Islam had grown up in the palace. You know, Firaun understood exactly who Musa al -Islam was. And so now that Musa al -Islam has come back, there was no doubt in his mind that this is truly the messenger of Allah. This is truly a messenger of Allah. And so for him to insult Musa al-Islam is something totally different. Now, Rasulullah Sussum said that every nation had a Fir'aun and the Fir'aun of this nation is Abu Jahl. Now, why? Because Abu Jahl also knew exactly who Rasulullah was. You know, and there was no doubt in his mind that he is truly the messenger of Allah. You know, and there are very clear statements of this from him. Yeah. But he was unwilling to accept him because, in or because if he accepted him, then he would have to accept his own inferiority. And he was not willing to do this. Yeah. And this is also an important point to understand the difference between Abu Jahl and Abu Sufyan. Yeah. Because Abu Sufyan later on becomes Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu. Even though if you look at some of the actions of Abu Sufyan against the Muslims and against Rasulullah they were worse than some of the actions of Abu Jahl. But the difference was that Abu Jahl had no doubt as to who he is. He did all of the things he did knowing that this is truly the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Whereas Abu Sufyan, he had doubts. You know, and this even becomes even more evident, you know, at the, when he eventually accepts Islam at the conquest of Makkah. Yeah. So that doubt saved him. Yeah. Because that doubt eventually became, became reality and, or, or, turned, or shifted from doubt to proof. And so when he saw the clear proof, then he accepted. Whereas Abu Jahl, even after knowing the clear proof, rejected. Fir'aun is the same way. You know, even after knowing who Musa al-Islam is, he insults him. So now everything changes. Now, all of the leniency that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given Fir'aun has now ended. The same way when we look at those where, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and he talks about the respect and, and the adab and the, uh, the honor that we should be giving his beloved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Quran. If you look at those verses, all of those verses start off with, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. You know, in Surah Baqarah, the first verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers, O you who believe, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. لا تقولوا رأينا وقولوا انذرنا واسمعوا 
walil kafirina adhabun alim that do not say ra'ayna say say unthurna and then listen attentively and then the warning at the end and for the disbelievers is a grievous punishment is a severe punishment hmm? meaning if you do not honor and respect him then it doesn't matter how many times you say the kalma you are a disbeliever hmm? the same way in surah adab surah hujurat surah 49 all of those verses again start off with ya ayyuhalladhina amanu and then the warning at the end, أَن تَحْبَتَ عَمَالُكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ That I will wipe away your deeds and you won't even perceive it. Yeah. And so we see this and in, in, in the end, and I'm going to, you know, we will see this especially in the end uh, when, when Pharaoh is dying. You know, he is not given Iman. Even though as he's drowning, he's calling out and saying that he believes in the Lord of Harun and Musa. He said, Allah says, no. You know. Why? Because when he, after knowing the truth, after knowing who Musa al -Islam is, and again, here Musa al -Islam is Kalimullah. He is the one who spoke to Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi is Habibullah. I mean, there's a world of difference in the two. He is the beloved of Allah. So if the Kaleem, if insulting the Kaleem is such a grievous crime, you know, or being disrespectful to the Kaleem after knowing who he is is such a grievous crime, then what about just being disrespectful to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi after knowing who he is? And so now what happens is that the, you know, the you know when they confer among each other they say keep them busy you know because we're going to go and collect all of, get get all of these great magicians from from the country and we want to challenge him you know because he's showing us this magic and so Firaun he talks to Musa al Islam further and he says okay well we want to do this we want to challenge you we want our magicians to challenge you so you pick a day. And Musa al-Islam says, well, the day of the festival. And they used to have this festival, and he says, Let, let's pick that day. And the festival would be in the middle, early morning, or not early morning, mid-morning. And he says, let's pick that day. That way everybody can come and see. Because the truth does not need to hide. And so Firaun agrees. And so the men are sent out, and they collect all of these magicians. 400 of them, you know, according to some narrations. 400 of them, you know, these were the cream of the crop as far as the magicians. These were the men who were masters of their trade. Yeah. And so they, they are all brought to Firaun. And they ask Firaun, they say, we want to see Musa. You know, we want to see the one that we're going to be challenging or going up against. In some narrations, they say, we want to see him while he is sleeping. And say so they go, and Musa al-Islam is sleeping. And they see, Musa, they see the staff of Musa al-Islam going around him, guarding him. And in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that when they, when they saw Musa al-Islam, he doesn't mention the, the seeing of the staff, but he says when they, they after seeing Musa al-Islam, now they confer among each other and there is a discussion or a dispute within themselves or among themselves because when they see this most of them realize that this is not a magician you know because magic doesn't work when you're sleeping you know, if he doesn't have his focus on the object then from a magician standpoint it's not going to work so this is some, something else and this is truly someone else, not a magician. And so, but there's that dispute. So even those who are saying this, they're also in, have some doubt. So they come, but they all come back to Firaun. And they say to Firaun, okay, well, we're, we're going to challenge this man. So what will we get for this? And well, will you be rewarded for doing this? And Firaun says, of course, you know, I'm going to reward you and I'm going to make you very close to me. You know, 
meaning that you know you will be you know close my advisors and which of course comes with a lot of perks just like Haman and Qarun, you know, if you read about Haman and Qarun, these, these men were so wealthy that they were, they were literally kings among, you know, within themselves. They were, they, if they had been under any place or in any place else, they would have been kings. Yeah. So, when the day of the challenge comes, the day of the festival, you know, the magicians come and Musa al -Islam, comes with, with Harun al -Islam. And the magicians, they're very polite to Musa al -Islam. They don't insult him, they're very polite to the extent that they even ask him that are you going to throw first or shall we throw first? Uh, and Musa al -Islam, he tells them, he says, you throw first. And so they throw their rods and the ropes and uh, and uh, they become serpents moving around. Everybody is seeing this. And in the Quran, Allah SWT mentions that when Musa al he sees this, he's struck with fear. But he's not afraid of their serpents and, and, and things. You know, the fear of Musa al is that when he sees this, and it looks so real, his fear is not for himself. The fear is for the people. That when they see this, or when they're seeing this, what is that going to do to their belief? You know, because they will be fooled and tricked by all of this, and they will buy into, you know, this magic. And of course, when they do this, they say, oh, we're doing this through the power of Fir'aun. So all of this is being ascribed to the authority of Fir'aun. So when the people see this and they, and, you know, and they buy into it, they're also going to be buying into Fir'aun as Lord. And so this is the fear of Musa a.s. Yeah. And so now Allah SWT tells Musa a.s. He says, don't fear, you throw your staff and I will destroy all of this or expose all of this trickery and so Musa al -Islam throws his staff and his, his, the serpent, the real serpent, devours all of this yeah. in front of everybody so it exposes everything you know, that's going on and immediately you know when they see this now for the magicians there is no doubt left you know before when they simply saw Musa al -Islam and, and, and the staff moving, and there was still some doubt. But now there's no doubt. So all of them immediately fall into prostration. And when they fall into prostration, they say that we believe in the Lord of Harun and Musa, alayhi salam. You know, which is also an interesting point, because they believe in Allah, but they believe in Allah through the wasila of Harun and Musa, alayhi salam. So through the wasila of the prophets of the time. And Fir'aun, of course, being upset, he says, how can you believe, how can you believe in, in the Lord of Harun and Musa when I have not given you permission? You know, if you're going to believe in, in, in anything, you can't believe in anything until I give you permission, is based on what he's saying. He says, so how can you believe in them when, without my permission? And, I, you know, and I'm going to punish you, I'm going to cut your hand from one side and your foot from the other side, and I'm going to crucify you on the palm trees. And if you've ever seen palm trees, you know, being crucified, period, the way they would do it, you know, this is a long and arduous death. Now, so that's what was so bad about crucifixion. You didn't die suddenly. You know, it took days or even weeks to die. You know, he tells him, he says, I'm going to do this, I'm going to chop off one, one hand on one side and the foot on the other side, make you imbalanced, and then I'm going to crucify you on the palm trees. And they say, you do what you want. You know, we believe in, in, in our Lord and we put trust in Him and we will not give up, you know, this, this belief of ours, you know, after we have seen the truth. Uh, because our return is to our Lord. 
I mean, this is the faith that they now possess. That again, they accepted that, that Lord through the wasila of Harun and Musa alayhi salam. One important point to understand here, which I'm going to start off next time with, is that there were 400 magicians who were the best at their craft. And these are the best magicians in the land. And yet they had no effect on Musa alayhi salam. And this is a very important point to understand because of what some people say about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, so inshallah we're going to end here today and continue from here next week in, or next next time inshallah. Uh, so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to understand uh, and fill our hearts with his love and, and the true love of his beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his companions and all of those whom they love. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa ala muhammadi wa ala sayyidina wa ala sayyidina. لَنَا مُحَمَّدٌ بَارِكَ سَمْسَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّةَ رَبَّنَا تَقَبَّلْ لَعَا رَبَّنَا ذَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِلَّمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَا مِنْ الْخَاسِرِينَ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةً وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Ya Allah, guide us through the straight path and make us understand uh, these stories of the Prophets that you have told us in the Quran so that we can better understand the status of your beloved Prophet Muhammad uh, and fill our hearts with his true love and the true love of his family and his companions and all of those whom you love and make it easy for us to do those things which please you and stay away from those things which displease you and raise us up in a condition where you are pleased with us and we are pleased with you. وَسَلَّ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ عَلَى خَيْرُ خَلْقِهِ مُحَمَّدٍ وَعَالِهِ وَسْحَابِ أَجْمَعِينَ بِرَحْمَتِكِ يَا ر